Hey y'all, it's Kelt. I haven't done one of these in a while, so let's talk about tactics of abusers. This time, let's specifically talk about Darvo. Roll clip. I want to let you all know that the allegations against me are false. Unequivocally and entirely. And me and my team are currently pursuing legal action against me. Also known as Maisie Lynn. My name is Michael Edward Brill. Not only am I innocent, but I intend to fight this with everything I have. I am a sexual assault survivor myself. These are crimes and they need to go to criminal court. She is trying to use the court of public opinion. Crimes are settled in criminal court. Maisie My name is Michael Brill and I am innocent. Before we go any further, in interest of full transparency, I did edit part of that clip as you can see. There are two instances in which I bleeped out something that he said. And those instances are what he released the full legal name of his alleged victim. The other name that I left in there, I left in because that is the public name that his alleged victim uses. And interestingly, him releasing her full legal name is part of the Darvo sequence, but we'll come back to that later. By the way, I didn't bleep out his name because it is his right to release his own personal identifiable information if he wants to. But basic backstory, this man was publicly accused of sexual assault and other forms of abuse. And within 15 or 20 minutes or so of that allegation becoming public, this is the response that he released. Which tells me he didn't put a lot of thought into this with how fast this came out. Which is great because this is giving us the actual raw reaction that he had when he is being held to the allegations against him. And because of that, we get a perfect example of Darvo in real time in a real scenario. Darvo is a model of how abusers and manipulators respond when they are being held accountable for their actions. It stands for Deny, Attack, Reverse Victim, and Offender. While the acronym is five letters, it is three stages. The first stage being Deny, the second stage being the Attack stage, and then the third stage is swapping the position of the offender and the victim. And we can chunk up his video into three main sections of Deny, Attack, and Reverse. The Deny stage he does at the beginning of his video. I want to let you all know that the allegations against me are false. And then he repeats it again at the end. My name is Michael Brill and I am innocent. So with those two clips, we have stage one. Now, an important caveat to know is just because someone denies an allegation does not automatically mean that they're going to do Darvo. Innocent people do deny the allegations against them. So denial is not an admission of guilt, but it is stage one. Now that denial is out of the way, we can look at part two of Darvo, which is the attack phase. Most of the time, the attack phase of Darvo is threats of legal action against the accuser or attacks on the accuser's character and morality. And me and my team are currently pursuing legal action against me. In this phase, we also have little sprinklings of the abuser trying to remind the accuser that they still hold something over them. The relationship may be over. There may now be distance between the accuser and the abuser, but the abuser wants the accuser to know that they still have power over them. And that's why I had to bleep out two sections of that video. He is reminding his accuser that he still has power over her, and the fact that he is reminding her that he still has her personal information. And he does this by trying to reveal to his audience her real name. Because abusers know the treatment of women online. He knows that women face unwanted sexual advancements, harassing, and stalking just by being a public figure online. So he knows that a woman's name and possibly later other information such as location being revealed online is a danger to that woman. And this was done purposefully because he used her public name and linked it to her online persona. That was a warning shot. That was his way of telling her, I still have some form of control over you. He is telling her he has no problem continuing those attacks. If she continues to pursue this, he can continue to release personal information. Second part of his attack phase is listen to his talk about his team. And me and my team are currently pursuing legal action. Manipulators and abusers want the victim to feel like that they are alone, while the abuser has a group of people who will stand by and support and help them. Looking at who he is and what he does for a living, I highly doubt that he has a team of attorneys on retainer. And I highly doubt that he managed to assemble a team of them within the 15 minutes he decided to release the statement. So this is show to make her afraid. So after the attack phase, we have the final stage in Darvo, in which you reverse the victim and the offender. The point of this is to make the court of public opinion that he references in his video feel sorry for the offender. That the victim is actually the one doing the abuse and the attack on the offender. What he's implying is if she actually had evidence, if she was actually the victim, then she would have taken this to criminal court. Never mind the fact that if we look at the stats of the court and criminal justice system about sexual assault, we can see that it's not in the favor of the victims. 
But something I've learned in my 18 years and over 10,000 investigations and interrogations, innocent people demand to see the evidence against them. You tell an innocent person that you have a video of them on camera committing a crime and their words are going to be, okay, show me, because they're going to call your bluff. In the accusation against him, it was mentioned that there are text messages and audio recordings of the abuse. There is no calling of a bluff in this video whatsoever. If you tell me that you have recordings of me abusing you and I'm innocent, I'm going to demand that you prove it, that you show that evidence. I'm not going to demand that you take it to a criminal court where I'm going to have to spend thousands of dollars on an attorney defending my innocence. You demand that when you know that there is evidence against you, but you feel that your attorney can get it thrown out of criminal court for things like foundation. Now, the second part of his reversing the victim and offender in this is when he claims to be a sexual assault victim. Now, he may be a sexual assault victim. I do not know, and I'm not going to minimize that. Now, that truly may be the case, and if it is, I am sorry that he went through that. But none of that means that he could not be an abuser himself. Him bringing up that he is a sexual assault survivor himself is nothing more than a deflection. Domestic violence victims can become abusers. Sexual assault victims can become abusers. Victims of violence can become perpetrators of violence. But all of that is put out there to make you feel sorry for him. That he is trying to make you believe that he is the true victim in all of this. But I will go ahead and tell you, based on the evidence that I have seen and gathered on this situation, both from his statement, her statement, and outside of this statement, he is absolutely not the victim in this situation. Again, over 18 years of experience in human intelligence, with over 10,000 investigations and interrogations. And I say over 10,000 because I stopped counting at 10,000. In my opinion, this man is a danger to women. And it is also my opinion that he is a perfect example of how a manipulator and abuser acts and reacts. And with that, I hope this video gives you a better understanding of how abusers react when they're forced to face accountability for their actions. Remember, take care of each other, believe victims, and stay safe out there.